Hi guys, it's Mrs. Longmire here. We have been learning about how readers question and predict. In all of our lessons, we've been learning about how readers question and predict. And we, we've learned a song that, that kind of goes with all of these strategies and it goes like this. Read, read, read the text, question while you go. Predict what will happen next, read on so you'll know. And in the first lesson, we talked about how readers predict when they're reading. And you gather details, reading voice details, and you start to put those details together and make patterns and, and use your memory of things you know about. And you, you make an inference or a prediction. Um, you predict what you think is going to happen next. And then you read on to see if you were right. You either confirm that you were right or you adjust your thinking. And then we, we talked about how readers preview the text before you even read a single word. We're like information thieves where we try to gather all of the details that we can, all the information we can before we even read a single word. We gather information from the title, from the cover of the book. We flip through the pictures and look at the pictures and the, and the charts and the graphs and gather all that information before we even read a single word. That's called previewing. And then we talked about how during the read, while you're reading, you have questions. You're wondering things. You're, re you're thinking voices whispering questions to you about who or what or when or where or why something's happening. And so your reading voice or your thinking voice should be whispering those questions. And then you read on to see if you were right. Okay. And then the, in the last lesson, we talked about sometimes we get confused when we're reading, we read a new vocabulary word, maybe a word that we've never seen before, or we've never seen it used like this before. And so we talked about how you can use two different types of clues. You can use picture clues. You can look in the picture and see if that helps you to figure out, out that word, or we can look at print clues, clues in the text, in the words. And um, sometimes if you read a few more words, you go back and reread the sentence, you'll see clues in the words that help you to figure those that, that tricky vocabulary word out. And so we, we worked on that in the last lesson. In today's lesson, we're gonna, we're gonna work on how sometimes readers want to write about those new vocabulary words that they learned about in their reading. And sometimes writing about those can really help you to understand it even more and can show others and tell others about what you read. And so um, we're gonna go back to that book in Epic that we were reading about the, with the Arctic animals. And I'm going to, to show you first what this could look like when you write about some of those new vocabulary words that we were confused about in the last lesson and then I'll need you to help me and, and to join in and to help um, help with writing about what we what we learned about okay and so if we go back I'm going to share my screen the first uh, the first um, page that we're going to look at was the penguin page I think it was about the penguin yes and the vocabulary word the new vocabulary word that that we looked at on this page was huddle and I read that emperor penguins huddle for warmth. And I was a little bit confused about huddle, but then I looked at the picture clue and, and I saw how they were all squished together in a big group. And then when I kept reading words, they take turns in the middle where it is the warmest and they're huddling to get warm. So they're, they're cozying up together to get warm. So I used picture clues and I used word clues. So if I were gonna write about this and actually draw a picture, um, I, I would draw a picture of all the penguins huddled together, squished together. So I drew a picture of the penguins kind of squished together. They're all squished together. And I wrote the word huddle. So if you're a great picture writer and a label writer, you could stop there. You could draw your picture of what the word means. And then you could just write a label like I did huddle. But I wanted to write a sentence about what huddle means. And I know some of you are ready to do that. And so um, I was trying to think about what I could write and I decided the penguins huddle together in a big groups to stay warm. So if I wrote that, the penguins huddle together in big groups to stay warm. That sentence sort of explains what that word huddle means. 
The penguins huddled together in big groups to stay warm. So I could have just drawn a picture because you can see they're huddled together in a group and write the word huddle and label it, or I could write a sentence. Okay, let me show you one more and then I want you to help me. So I'm gonna to go to the owl page, the snowy owl, and I'm gonna read the, the, the part that um, I sort of got confused on. Snowy owls use sharp claws called talons to catch lemmings and other prey. So I got kind of confused on the word talons. And so I went back and read the text again to use word clues or print clues. Snowy owls use sharp claws called talons. So I know they're sharp claws. And then I looked at the picture and I saw those sharp claws like getting ready to land on that poor little animal. Right. And so um, if I wanted to write about this, I could draw the owl and draw their sharp talons and then draw the little animal, the little mouse or, or whatever he's getting ready to eat. And I drew an arrow to the sharp claws and I could just label it and write talons. And then by the picture, you could tell what that word means. It's pointing to its sharp claws and how he's getting ready to use those claws to eat this little mouse. Or if I wanted to write a sentence about that, I could, um, let me think, how could I write a sentence that I wanted it to say what these talons mean? Well, I know the talons are, are sharp claws used to catch their prey. So if I said, owls use their sharp talons to scoop up their prey, because you're getting ready to scoop it up. So I could write some words to, to, that say that. Owls use their sharp talons to scoop up their prey, and prey are the animals that they eat. Owls use their sharp talons to scoop up their prey. So in this sentence, you can figure out what talons mean. It's their sharp claws, their sharp talons, right? To scoop up their prey, it's what they use them for. And so you could do a picture and just label talons and just draw an arrow so we can know what, what it means, or, Readers can write sentences, okay? So are you ready to try this? Okay, let's go to the beluga page, the beluga whale page, and try this next one. So the, the word we got kind of confused on was pod. And so it says a beluga lives in a group called a pod. The whales in the pod talk to each other using sounds such as chirps, whistles, and squeals. So when we stopped and we were kind of confused by the word pod, I read it again, I read the words again, a beluga lives in a group called a pod. So it's a group, a group of whales. And if I look at the picture, they're sort of swimming together in a group. And so a group of whales that live together is called a pod. So that's what the word pod means. So think about what you could draw in a picture to show what a pod is. Think about that for a second. What could you draw in a picture to show what a pod of whales is? Did you say draw a group of whales together, swimming together or living together in the ocean? Yeah, great job. So you could, just draw a group of whales, a beluga whales. Draw like three or four or five whales swimming together in a group. See how they're swimming together? And I kind of made an arrow around this. So the whole group is called a pod. So you could just label and draw an arrow to the whole group of whales living together. Great idea, great job. Now. Think about if you wanted to write a sentence to go with this picture that would explain what a pod is, that vocabulary word. What could your sentence say? Think about that. Did you say beluga whales live together in a pod? Yeah, something like that. Beluga whales live together in pods in the ocean. How about that? Beluga whales live together in pods. 
So that sentence explains what it is. They live together. It's a group of whales that live together, right? So you could write the, the words, beluga whales live together in pods in the ocean and put a period. So you always want to use the vocabulary word in your sentence. Try If you're going to write a sentence, use that vocabulary word in the sentence to explain what it means. Because remember, we figured out what it meant in the last lesson using those picture clues and print clues. So now we want to explain what it means in writing. And, um, and great job. You did a great job of coming up with a good idea for a picture and a label or a sentence. And so um, that that's kind of up to you and your teacher if you if, if you can draw pictures and, with labels or if you can write sentences and kind of do both. Uh, I'm going to include the um, just uh, the the form that I use to do this writing. Um, it's just got the box at the top and then lines at the bottom in case you want to write a sentence or a box for your picture. And uh, if you're going to draw a picture and label. Um, if you don't have a printer and can't print this out, um, you can just draw a box and draw lines. That's very easy to do on paper um, and just draw your picture with a label. Or if you can write sentences, you could write a, a sentence about what that vocabulary word means. So if you were in Mrs. Longmire's class, I would have you go back to some of those other pages that we did. You know, we we talked about the um, the musk ox living in herds. So if you wanted to to draw a picture of what a herd is and then uh, label it and then write a sentence. Or we also talked about the walrus um, and his tusks. And so you could uh, draw a picture of the walrus's big tusks, maybe draw an arrow to the tusk and write a sentence about what the tusks are. Remember, we use the picture clues about their long teeth or I mean the word clues, long teeth or the picture clues. Um, to to talk about what tusks are. Or you could go on to the other sections of this book. Maybe, you know, in your assignment last time, maybe you read some other sections about the Arctic fox or um, the caribou, and you came, came up with new vocabulary words. You could draw a picture of that vocabulary word in action, label it, or you could write a sentence. Um, so that's what I would have you do if you were Mrs. Longmire's class, but your teacher might have an even better idea.